Well, let's return to security uh, on this show. We're going back to arming police officers on the road, especially those on traffic duties. Well, this afternoon, uh, the uh, Bureau of Public Safety is calling for a halt of that um, policy because they believe that there's certain that certain systems that need to be put in place that have not yet been done. I've got the executive director on the on Skype with us, Namaya Wakwada. Namaya, thank you for your time this afternoon. I also have um, Adam Bona, who is security analyst, also chief executive officer of the security warehouse. Ms. Abona, thank you for your time as well. Thank you. Now, I, I, let me come to you. Let me start with you, Nanayao. Nanayao, you're saying that, you're, first of all, you knew, in your release, you talk about the fact that this is an ad hoc, um, it's, it's an ad hoc measure by the Interior Minister and the IGP. You want it to be uh, immediately put on hold. And your reason is that we're not ready for that. Explain that a bit more. Well, um, let me see if we have to to you uh, Deepness. It's it's important to know when we say that we are not ready for that, we are basing it on previous empirical evidence that we are all witnesses to. We have seen uh, the police service largely discharge itself appropriately, but a session of the police service and most of the time um, engaging with citizens or um, suspects have not been able to demonstrate soft skills that are crucial to maintaining the peace and deepening the trust and enhancing the relationship between citizens and the police. I cite a classic example of Manson Quanta where the police opened fire on seven people and literally killed them. I also want to present the torture driver and his mate incident that occurred in Accra. Mm. There are many other incidents that goes to demonstrate how the police, um, when it is most crucial, fail to um, demonstrate calmness. They fail to demonstrate a high sense of escalating, de-escalating capability. On the back of this, we think that arming the police or expanding the number of officers who are armed will be a recipe for uh, more chaos. So we believe that before this is done, the police must be equipped, but they must be equipped with soft skills. They must be equipped with adequate standard operating procedures that they will follow in the discharge of their duties. It's only when these are done that we can run uh, the policy that the minister have mentioned. And I think I forgot the last mm. one, that they must also inform and educate citizens on some of these procedures and expectations of the police. Are you so saying that, that the citizens have not seen, followed what is happening, and that they won't feel much safer on the road? They won't feel, uh, they won't feel that the police has been protected, which is why they have to be um, given those uh, armed and protected with bulletproof vests uh, because the public has followed this. And when you also talk about providing the police with soft skills, until when? If it's going to take 10 years, do people still have to wait for 10 years with the police being on the street without the necessary protection? Let me quickly address these two incidents. Mm. One, the police are provided guns yeah. primarily to protect the citizenry. Mm. So, Anyone thinking that they provide guns to the police to protect themselves right from the word go is beginning on the wrong footing. So if you want to protect the citizenry, police all over the world, policing all over the world, are encouraged to de-escalate issues. They are encouraged to use persuasive language. Mm. They, should, they are encouraged to use what in recent time we call persuasive force 
to um, calm nerves and enforce the law. Okay. Let the me just bring... Guys, uh, hold so, on, so, ask two questions. Let me do justice to Okay, the wrap it up briefly uh, for me on there. Yes, please right, go the ahead. Issue of, the issue of, of, of guns coming in is a last resort. Hmm. And then, secondly, the issue of... Um, I think that escaped me real quick, so you can move on to Adam if... Uh -huh, the issue of how to implement it, talking about how it's going to take time. Hmm. The fact is that we have a visibility policing program in place. The, to, uh, as a support to the visibility policing program, we have quick response units littered across the cities or the town or towns. Mm. We can beef up the quick response units, equip the MTTD officers with radios so that they can call for support as and when the need arises. Okay. All right. Let me bring you in, Mr. Bona. I mean, it, it, this, this sounds like a, an idea that makes a lot of sense. He says, we've not trained our police officers very well, looking at what happened previously. Um, we need some time to train them. We need some time to, to conscientize Ghanaians on what really the plan is. What do you make of this? Right. Good afternoon to your viewers and good afternoon to Namaya. Uh, yes, I fully agree entirely with what Namaya uh, is saying. The truth is that we, we react, you know, we are, we are reactive when it comes to, you know, most of the things we do, we do in this country, including uh, issues of security. Some of us have, over the years, uh, asked that when are we going to see uh, a comprehensive national security policy? We don't still have such a policy document. And so, for instance, a few years ago, the, we used to have MTTU, and it was changed to MTTD. Mm. If you know the difference between the U and then the D, one is a unit and one is a department. Mm -hmm. And when you say a department, it's like you want to go to the University of Ghana. Uh, you, have, it's, you are talking about faculty where yeah. they are, it has its own structures, it mm. has its own brain. And so, for instance, the moment it became a department, it was supposed to, one of the foremost things that it was supposed to have was, a, a, what do you call it, the transport police training school. Hmm. As we speak, this narrative, we still don't have a training school for motor traffic uh, officers. We don't have it. And so under what circumstances do you send the motor traffic uh, officers to the general uh, depot, so wherever you train them? And these facilities are not equipped with facilities to train people who are supposed to be specialized in transporting, in transport uh, activities like air. I mean, when you say transportation, even marine transportation is supposed to come under the MTTD. So, Mr. Bona, oh, essentially, you agree with the public or bureau safety, uh, the bureau of public safety. Yes, I did say I agree entirely with them, and mm. I'm going further to say, you see, we are being too reactive because we haven't put the structures in place, and we we usually will prefer solutions that are not research based. Mm. The Ghana Police Service has a research unit. What are they doing? Are they, I mean, are, are they, this decision to arm police officers, was it, uh, you know, based on research? What is a research? That says that police, most of these MTTD officers, I can tell you for a fact, I've interacted with most of them. Some of them cannot even fire an AK-47 properly. They can't I even see. handle, what do you call it, a side arm properly. Okay. And you are going to arm said persons for what? To okay. kill people? One okay. other thing, let me, let me learn. One other thing I have called for is that there has to be balance in this communicate in this conversation. First of all, I am a civilian. If I get hurt or brutalized by the police, we have been calling for the independent public police, uh, what do you call it, complaint commission authority. We don't have that in place. And so if you give arms to rock, uh, some rock police officers and they shoot into the public, where do we go to, to seek redress? These are the fundamentals. And until those fundamentals are cleared, I'm telling you that this decision is flawed. It's flawed before it starts. I'm hoping that in the next few days, when Puma, the police uh, management board sits, they would reverse this decision and tell us that they are not arming the police officers with lethal weapons, but with maybe tasers and maybe pepper sprays and the rest, but not okay. bullets and firearms.
Okay, but certainly bulletproof. Okay, um, uh, unfortunately, we've run out of time. I believe that we can continue this conversation in the course of the week uh, to get people more conscientized on your positions and hopefully get some responses from government on this as we go along. I, I agreed? Absolutely. Very well. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me on this discussion. Like I said, we'll continue in the course of the week. Namaya Wakwada is Executive Director of the Bureau of Public Safety. And, of course, you also heard from Adam Bona, who is a security analyst with the Security Warehouse um, there.